Hello, and welcome to chapter one, getting to know your anxiety. Now you might be thinking, I live with anxiety every day, my teens and my own. I know anxiety very well. Yes, and sometimes the things that are most familiar to us can bear some inspection. Because anxiety isn't just one thing. It has many facets and can show up in many different ways. Understanding how anxiety typically shows up for you and your teen, when, where, how, etc., can inform how we respond to it. That will be the work of the chapters to come. A second reason to be curious about our anxiety is that we can shift how we see it that way. When we humans get stressed and overwhelmed by anxiety, or really any strong emotion, there is a tendency for our thinking to become very black and white, all or none, simplified. We can lose perspective and nuance. We tend to say, say things like, this always happens, or I'll never be able to do it. Our thinking and our outlook become very black and white and boundless. Getting to know your anxiety means seeing that these thoughts and feelings do in fact have boundaries, predictable patterns, specifics around time and place, nuance, as in the difference between feeling scared and feeling nervous. And then there's this quirk of our language. We say, I am worried, in the same way that I would say, I am Chris. We can, we can become identified with or fused with our emotions. Getting to know your anxiety means we see it as an experience having, you're having in the moment and not who you are. That's an important distinction. So what do we mean when we talk about anxiety? I think classic anxiety as worries in our minds, stressful thoughts or images about some bad or challenging event in the future. A teen is worried about how she'll do on an upcoming test. A parent worries and frets while the teen is out driving on a rainy night. We could also experience feelings of fear, an intense fight or flight response to something happening in the moment this can be triggered by a threat, real or imagined, or simply by a change of plans or some frustration. Because it really is a fight or flight response, this kind of anxiety may show up in our teen as anger, defiance, resistance, or retreat. Physical sensations can be a big part of anxiety too. The classic butterflies in the stomach or outright nausea, a heavy sense of dread, heart racing, sweating, headaches, restlessness. Seeing the whole picture of anxiety means including behaviors that tend to follow these thoughts and emotions and physical sensations. We'll look more closely at that in the next chapter. So now, now that we have some ideas about anxiety and all the ways it can show up, I want you to think about a recent time when your teen was anxious. Maybe some, take some notes organized around describing the situation, the thoughts that showed up, what emotions or feelings bodily sensations and behaviors were included, included, including what your teen is not doing. For example, he's not getting his homework started. You don't need to dig out a thesaurus, but think of how you would describe your teen's emotional state in clear and specific terms. Was it fear or nervousness, agitation or dread, impatience or frustration or some combination of these feelings? Were they expressing worried thoughts? What were those thoughts exactly? Were they specific, like, I'm not going to get this essay written in time for the deadline? Or was it more vague and all or none, like, I'm never going to get into college? What action did your child want from you at the time? Was it a clear request, like, can you read over my essay, please? Or was it some less clear statement, like, this is hopeless? Now try to remember what emotions, thoughts, physical sensations, and memories of your own experiences were stirred up in you. Anxiety, impatience, sadness, hopelessness? Maybe all of the above. And then what behavior of yours followed? Was it rescue, retreat, reassurance? Okay, here's your homework. Over the next week, I want you to notice, just observe with curiosity, what your teen is thinking and feeling, emotionally and physically, when tough situations show up, as best as you can from the information they're giving you. You may have to infer some of this from their behavior. 
but you'll probably be a pretty good judge of what's going on inside them. What are the clear and specific words that you would use to describe their experience? Notice too, also with curiosity, what gets stirred up in you at these times? What thoughts, emotions, bodily sensations, and tendency toward action show up for you? All by itself, I wouldn't expect this noticing and describing to change your teen's anxiety or your own in the short run, but it's a good start to taking a more mindful, curious, and flexible approach to these challenging experiences. Thanks for watching.